And so you can see what a metal print looks like and how it's sitting flat, eventually how it's hanging up, all the nuances, the intricacies, because it is such a visual process buying art. We have a feature called the wall preview, uh, which allows you to cycle through various different room types. Again, such a visual process buying art. Not only can you circle through the different room types, and yes, you can add your own room type images in. We use some generic ones by design, and you can size pieces up and down see what it's going to look like do i need a 36 by 49 is that too big do i instead want a 28 by 38 we're making it easier for your potential customer to get to a buying decision what if they want to their wall their walls aren't white right what if they're this ugly color or there's something a little bit darker is the piece going to look good with this color right because again buying art is just such an incredibly visual process um you know another feature that that everybody likes to talk about that we get a lot of plaudits for is we Here have this, we are we have this feature, and excuse me, me, mute that, called Live Preview with AR, okay? And what this is, is this allows somebody to come to your website with their telephone, can be iPhone or Android, you can see the phones here on the right-hand side, and without downloading any apps, uh, they can just use their phone, their camera, and press one button on your website that says Live Preview, and what this is going to do, it's going to take the camera on their phone, okay, which is gonna show the real room, the real wall, where the art will potentially go, and then it takes your piece in augmented reality and it projects it onto the wall, and you're able to move it around with your finger, you're able to size it up, size it down, take screenshots, and so is it gonna look great in the room? What size do I need to get, right? And so, again, this is attempting to solve for the visual friction of, I don't know if it's gonna work in my room, I don't know what it's gonna look like, right? It's just getting them one step closer to a buying decision, removing the friction from the process. And, you know, I've been doing e-commerce marketing, digital marketing my entire life. Everyone loves to gravitate towards the wall preview or the live preview with AR, but the reality is when you do this for any period of time, it's not about one individual feature. It's about all the features working in conjunction, and you never know which one's going to end up, you know, if we think of a sports analogy like a basketball team, it's how many players you have on the court that can contribute, right, to eventually scoring that basket. And so it's why we do the demo process. We have literally hundreds and hundreds of features, all to remove the friction, all to help you get better at selling art and photography online. And when you, when you request one of these things, uh, our outreach team will reach out, have a conversation with you, and schedule it. It goes like an hour and 10 minutes, and we just go through feature after feature after feature. So it's not about any one of them. It's about all of them working in conjunction. Um, independent of that, let's keep working down the page. So we also have a ton of back-end software. It turns out running an art business, art photography business, there's a ton of individual little nuance and things that, that can slow you down, okay? Things like uploading an image and how many images do you have to upload to your web page for all the various different media sizes and types you have. It's very helpful to be able to just upload one, have all the sizes auto-populate for you and tell you exactly what you can sell. Uh, things like markups, how do you set markups? Can you do it globally? Can you do it per media type, right? And so no one likes to talk about the back end features, but we have a slew of those as well. All uh, there to make your life easier, to give you time back, okay? Um, let's talk about our fulfillment. And I, w we love talking about this. This is in our, our company DNA pretty significantly, but I'll pull up a website. So we're on Bill Stidham's site. Um, or I should probably start here, actually. So we are integrated. Well, let me start here. You can have it any which way you like. If you're an artist that just does originals and you get orders, obviously you're going to be responsible for fulfilling the originals because you have them. Uh, if you're an artist that has a local printer or a photographer that has a local printer, you really like using your printer, you can use your printer. The orders come in, you send the order to your printer. We call that self-fulfillment, no problem. What we recommend our customers do, though, is integrate with one of our print partners, and I'll get into the reasons why. But we've got graphic dimensions on the East Coast. We've got Bay Photo on the West Coast. We've got Print Partner for our customers in Canada. And then we just recently integrated with a company called Guten that handles the merchandise, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, how does it work? You sign up, you get your, st your site set up, which usually takes 14 days or less. You click a button that says, I want to integrate with this print partner. An order comes into the website. The printer gets paid. You get paid. The order gets printed. The order gets boxed. Your logo goes on the side of the box. Boom, it ships to the customer. You touch absolutely nothing. There's nothing you have to touch, nothing you have to do. All happens automatically. And again, it's to give you back that amount of time. And, you know, no one has time in today's day and age to be dealing with the admin, okay? Any time that you spend on the admin, by which I mean sending the order to your local printer, uh, uh, 
checking on the proof, uh, uh, sending tracking numbers, did it ship, any of that correspondence, all of that, if you're spending your time on that, is time you are not spending on your biggest problem, which is your marketing. So we really believe like streamlining sort of this drop shipping, print on demand, automated fulfillment is a very, very wise decision if you wanna create successful artists and photographers. Now just recently, um, this was probably what, like a month before Christmas maybe, we integrated with a company called Guten. And what it allows our customers to do is sell merchandise of a myriad of different kinds. You know, uh, hoodies, uh, iPhone cases, tank tops, um, you know, they can come in, adjust the image exactly how they want to see it. Maybe they want to tilt it depending on what case it is and get iPhone cases and, you know, a number of different other items. Um, we've got throw pillows and uh, I clicked out of it and coffee mugs. And we're adding more and more and more and more of these. And on the subject of merch, we realize, again, if you go back to our original mission, why we exist, you know, we want we need to create a set of circumstances, a set of conditions such that the artist, the photographer can make and grow as successful a business as they want. And so some artists look at this merch and they're like, they turn their noses up at it. And like, that's not fine art. Why would I ever want to do that? Some are like, I'm all in. I love it. We don't care. Our job is to provide as many different opportunities for artists and photographers to be successful as possible. And we've been totally blown away by how much of this stuff actually, believe it or not, sells. Um, and some of it is higher margin than you would think. Like a throw pillow is $44. And what does a tote bag cost? I think a tote bag costs $38. So sell it or not, you have every opportunity imaginable available to you. If you want to have it all, and kind of like Bill does here on his site, where you know you have your fine art uh, uh, media types across the top, and then you have the merch all in one product page, great. If you want to have individual items in the store, you want to have your artwork fine, and then you just want to have a line of phone cases. Uh, if you want to have one for a couple of weeks and then turn it off, you can do any and all of that, and it's one click to turn it on at any point in time. It's automated. It's completely automated in terms of fulfillment, and and that's not going to change. And we realize, again, like artists and photographers are essentially just creators, right? You're just creators, and you have a talent. You have a talent with a brush, or you have a talent with a lens. You want to monetize that talent, okay? So again, our job is to give you as many different opportunities to be able to monetize that talent as possible. So that's how we that's how we go about it. And you know, again, it's a debate about when to use it or when not. But somebody on one of these um, sessions earlier was like, "You know who's the greatest rock band of all time?" I was like, "No, who?" He's like, "The Rolling Stones." He goes, "Guess what the Rolling Stones have at their concerts?" I said, "What? A giant booth for merch." He's like, they sell hundreds of thousands of dollars of it a year. If the stones sell it, I'll sell it. So anyway, I thought that, that kind of stuck with me. It was fun. So that's our, our print fulfillment. Um, and, and I should say, too, that we're adding calendars, and we're adding puzzles, and we are adding photo books. And to be honest with you, if they come out with a line of hot air balloons, we'll add hot air balloons, too, right? Because, again, it's creating a set of circumstances such that the artist and photographer can be successful. We don't care where the success comes from. I don't care if Brian gets into business and he's the, the number one iPhone selling case guy of the entire United States. He's got a successful business, right? So not for us to decide. Um, support. We believe we have best-in-class support. If you took a look at our Facebook ads and you scrolled through the 350 of them, you'll see more positive responses for the support than just about anything else. We're very, very good at this. Yes, it's in all the venues you think it is, email, phone, chat support. But in addition to that, kind of what I'm most proud about is we run six days a week, including Saturdays, Zoom sessions, just like the one you're on right now, okay? And you can pop into one at any point in time with any support-related issue and get fixed, get unstuck. There's screen shares. They can take over control of your computer and just get you sorted, uh, get you sorted instantaneously. So we're very, very good at it. Not only do we support our application, we ask, we, we, we ask you guys, we teach you guys marketing all year long, which I'll get into in a second. What if you're having a problem with Facebook or with Instagram or with MailChimp or with your Facebook ads? We actually support that too. You can pop into a Zoom session and say, hey, Patrick, I'm stuck on my Facebook ads. I'm getting this message. Can you help me? And our team will get you unstuck. That's an amazing thing. There's not many companies that do that. So I'm very, very proud about that. Um, that's in terms of the overall website picture. And we essentially do all of that, okay, to give you your time back such that you can work on the biggest problem that every single solitary person on this Zoom call has, which is the marketing problem. You need to get better at it. And let me tell you, I've got 4,700 customers, and there is only one universal truth about every one of them, right? 
every niche imaginable, every subject matter all over this country and others. Every one of them has a marketing problem. The person that just passed $500,000 a year in sales has a marketing problem. They want to grow that business, they have a marketing problem. The person that just is getting started, sold their first piece, they have a marketing problem and everybody in between, right? It is the biggest problem. And so, you know, we want to create successful customers. We realize we need to teach artists and photographers how to market. And so how did we solve for that particular problem? We created collectively what might as well be called the art business university. That's how we look at it because I'm not sure there's a better term to explain it. One, we have the best digital education that exists in terms of selling art and photography online, full stop. I'm, I'm hang my hat on this. We have detailed documentation that we call playbooks on every marketing facet of imaginable. How to run an email campaign, how to run a Black Friday sale, how to go live on Instagram, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time with your laptop on a cell phone. Detailed, step-by-step, -step, audio, video, screenshot documentation. If we're asking you to send emails, we will give you the email copy. You just adjust it to taste for what you're doing. So the playbooks are incredible. They're very robust and they're very focused on teaching you how to market. We pair that with a 365 day a year marketing calendar, okay? It has on it beginner, intermediate, and advanced. You take on what you can take on. You're never not knowing what you need to be doing on a week in, week out basis. You start doing, you, first, you're overwhelmed. You're like, this is, I've never done this. This is crazy. How am I gonna survive? And then you fight through it and you, and you got through the beginner level and then you take on the intermediate and then you take on the advanced. The majority of our customers follow this doggone near verbatim year in, year out because it works, it's effective. Not only does it tell you what to do, but it solves for one of the greatest, the other greatest pandemic of our lifetime, the shiny object syndrome, okay? Not only does the calendar tell you what to do, it tells you what not to do, okay? What not to be spending your time on. Right, And how do I know this? One, I'm very good at digital marketing. Two, we have 4,700 customers and I get to see all of their data. I can tell everyone on this call conclusively out of the 4,700 customers that I have, I have not seen anyone turn a positive ROI out of marketing on Pinterest. No one is making any money from marketing on Pinterest. So I'm going to tell you, you don't have to worry about Pinterest. I see you laughing, Mary. I do not want you spending any time on Pinterest, period. Waste of time. So too with SEO, okay? So the, the calendar is equally powerful on what you need to focus on is what you ignore, okay? It's what you ignore, and that's a big deal. Number three of the Art Business University is what we call office hours, okay? We take the entire customer base, we split it into three. Until you sell, sell $2,000 directly on your website, you're in the traction group. Uh, and after you sold $2,000 on your website, you're in the ramping group. After you sold a much higher revenue threshold that we don't publish, you get in the advanced group, which we call growth. We hold week in, week out, every single solitary week, and we took one week off for New Year's, but essentially 48, 49 weeks a year. Uh, Zoom calls like this, you come on on a weekly basis. There are, it's either me or members of my team. We go over the playbooks, we go over the calendars, we talk about wins, uh, how it's, somebody landed an interior decorator and sold $35,000 worth. They're gonna come on and tell their story. Not only are they gonna come on and tell their story, they're gonna say, Here's the email that did it, here's the copy, here's the Facebook post, and you can go and look at that stuff, right? And you're learning in concert with your peers. Digital online education is not enough, okay? If you look at the stats out there, I don't care who it is, Kajabi or Masterclass or lynda.com, 30% of the people that buy those courses actually finish them. So we can't just have digital education. We have to have in-person teaching sessions, and everyone knows how to Zoom now, it's our new reality. So those sessions, which we started like, I think two weeks, three weeks ahead of the pandemic, have been the single solitary biggest fundamental change to our business we've ever had. If before the pandemic, I had 100 customers and I told those 100 customers via email, guys, Black Friday's coming, you gotta get going on your sale. Here's the playbook, right? And then I recorded a podcast episode and I was like, we're gonna do this. 35 out of the 100 would take action. After these video sessions where I'm able to go through things, people are able to ask their questions, raise their hands, get unstuck, learn your peers, I have 75 people taking action on that sale and it's fundamentally changing the business. It is making our customers more successful, uh, uh, more accountable, actually staying focused. Like, look, you guys are all solopreneurs for the most part. I mean, we could pull this entire group and not a lot of you guys have a big team. You don't have an office behind you where you're yelling at an intern to help you out. You are a solopreneur, okay? You, you know, myself, the CEO, we've been entrepreneurs our entire life. I know it's a roller coaster. I know there's highs and the lows. When you're on those lows, 
you need to kick in the pants, right? You need to be lifted up sometimes. And that's what these Zoom sessions do too, which is incredible. We follow it up with a Facebook group that is highly curated, okay? Uh, uh, there's no trolls, there's no nonsense in there, right? You've seen some of the other groups out there online and how ridiculous it gets in those things. And artists are sharing with other artists, photographers are sharing with other photographers, the people that are in the landscape niche are talking to others in the landscape niche. Hey guys, what do you think of this new direction? What did you use in terms of pricing? They're publishing their wins. And so sometimes you can't just hear it from us, the official company mouthpiece. And so it's nice to have a whole bunch of people that are doing the same journey at the same time, um, helping each other out, sharing, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? So that collectively is the art business university. And it's, it's like a college. It, I mean, it really is. And the difference is you pay your tuition, you come in, and there's no graduates because the learning never stops, right? And, you know, in addition to that, it, it never will stop. In today's digital marketing landscape, the goalposts are just constantly moving, right? Like, so quickly, you feel like you just learned something, and it moves over here. So we keep you up to date with all of that. As a final, about six months ago, or maybe five months ago now, we started an in-house marketing agency. And it's an in-house marketing agency that only does one thing. It helps artists and photographers sell more art online and off. And we believe already, as of current today's date, it's the biggest, it's the biggest soul-focused art and photography marketing agency in the world. And that's not hyperbole. I've been asking on these calls, can someone name me an agency that specializes only in helping artists and photographers sell their work? I haven't found one. No one's ever put one in the chat for me, especially not a big one. Why? Because my aforementioned point, selling art and photography is not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or scooters. It's hard. Right, it's really hard, uh, and we're good at it because we've been working at it for a long time. Also, you know, I I get upset, right? Because I look at all of you guys as like, you own a McDonald's, right? And if you owned a McDonald's, you have to know how to do the ordering. You have to know how to clean the floors. You have to know how to open the building. You have to know how to operate the drive-through window. You have to be able to flip burgers and fries and do all of that and do the ordering, right? Like it's your business. You need to understand those things. But at the same time, I'm not naive in the sense that 80% of our customers still have full-time jobs or in some capacity, maybe they're service-based photographers and they're trying to sell their fine art. So I get it. You need, you need to be able to have the ability, if you don't have the time to do the marketing and you have the resources, you need a la carte things that you can jump off the shelf. Hey guys, I need my Instagram profile tuned up. I need my Facebook page tuned up. I need to help with a sales campaign. You need to be able to do that sometimes. In addition to things like, we'll completely build your website for you. You don't wanna do that. You hate building websites. Uh, your fears in life, in order, are death, taxes, and building another website. I get that, I get that, right? So you can drop your images in a folder, tell us to build the site, we'll build the site for you, okay? We'll manage your Facebook ads, okay? We will manage all of your social posting. And again, it goes back to the top premise. Like, our job is to create successful customers. And so we looked at it six months ago and it's like, we need to have an agency. And then some people are like, well, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, I want to do it myself. Fantastic. Our job is to have the best DIY product, do it yourself, learn, come on the sessions, and then also have an agency where you can pay. And again, it's all a card or it's, you know, up, up to almost full service. And the, the amazing thing about it is, you know, I've been doing marketing a long time, right? What do all marketers love? A case study. Oh, we love a case study, right? With the sexy data about this huge win and we publish it on social media and we use it for lead generation. So totally did that all the time, okay? Guilty, guilty, you know? And if, if, if you lose, you don't publish it, right? You wait till you hit a winner and, and do all that. But it used to be I would go and run a case study with a customer and, you know, I'd have limited bandwidth to do that and then we would build the playbooks. Well, guess what I have now? I've got agency staff. I've got one guy that all he does all day long is spruce up Instagram pages for artists and photographers. He's done, he did 65 of them last week or you know, probably 65 last month. So imagine the learnings that we're getting. What happens is the learnings are going right back into the playbooks and then they're coming onto the Zoom sessions and they're teaching and we've got a little flywheel going on, right? We've got a little artist and photographer education flywheel. So it doesn't matter if you ever order a single solitary service from the agency, and we don't even care if the agency ever makes any money, in all honesty, because all it does is just improves the product, makes more successful customers, uh, and helps us grow. So we really, at the end of the day, are fundamentally a business that can be thought of as a rowboat, right? Um, it takes our oar, your oar, we jump in the boat in the same time, and if we can get that thing rowing in the same direction, the faster we can get that going, the better everybody does. So that's Art Storefronts in a nutshell. Uh, that's my presentation. All right. Um, thanks for sticking that out, watching watching that with me. And can you can you guys see me? Okay. By the way, I'm trying something new today, and I can't see my video. But can you see it pyramid behind me? 
Like Brian, give me a thumbs up if you can. Yeah, you can. Great. You know, I came up, I came up with this like the, why I have this silly pyramid behind me. It's not silly. It's awesome looking, but you know the I stole it from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay, and again, I've been running hundreds of these calls. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs, like his pyramid again, is like you know you have to find shelter, and then you have to find food, and then you can deal with like the psychological stuff and self fulfillment and everything else as you go up the pyramid. Everyone on this call is on the second rung of the pyramid. You don't realize, I'm trying to do this like digitally, you don't realize what the bottom layer of the pyramid is. Everyone on this call thinks they have a website problem or they have a niche selection problem or they have the fact that all the shows and theaters are, are closed so they can't, they can't sell their art that way anymore. Or you think you have, if you just knew what size uh, I was selling that and you, you had that information, then, then you'd be good. And, and fundamentally, the bottom block of this pyramid is attention. Every single solitary person on this call needs more attention. You need attention. You need eyeballs to see your art. Until you get attention, you can't even have the website problem because no one's coming to it, right? You can't have the niche selection problem because no one's seen your art full stop. So really, really important to understand that. The next rung up is you know, essentially getting the business model right, understanding collectors, and then there's the three ways to sell art right now, okay? The business, the business model and collectors. The business model is selling direct, so not anyone in between you and the end buyer. You have to get that right if you want to have a successful business for a whole lot of reasons. Uh, the second one is collectors. If you are not gathering a list of collectors, okay, that you can market to in the future, it's very, very difficult to make it as, a, as an artist or a photographer. A collector is someone that will buy in upwards of seven to 15 pieces of art from you uh, throughout a lifetime. And there's a number of different books that talk about collectors. Uh, I steal the definition from Wyland. He wrote a great book on this, uh, which I can show you in a second. You get those two things figured out, you realize that A, uh, uh, you need to sell direct, you can't have anybody in between. B, um, you know, that, that, that collectors are the bread and butter of any, of any art photography business, period. Uh, then you get into the three ways to sell art. Number one way, best way to sell art, always has been the case, always will be the case, in person, face to face, and direct, right? Uh, uh, if you can get a prospective buyer in front of you, sell directly to them, that is the best way to do it. Problem, uh, you are geographically fixed on this earth, and obviously you can't, um, you have to sleep, and you know you can't have 15 conversations at once. So you need a website, a website solves for that. So number one, best way to sell art, direct, face-to-face. -face. Number two, the newest way to sell art that the whole entire world's trying to figure out right now, it's the exact same thing that we're doing right now. It is live video directly, uh, whether it's one-to-one, -one, I get on a Zoom call with a potential buyer and they look at my art, or one-to-many. You have a live art show and you have thousands of people tuned in in which you're selling your art. That's the next best way to sell it. The worst way to sell it, on your website. On your website. People always look at me like I'm crazy when I say that because like, aren't you guys the website company? On your website is the single solitary worst way to sell art out of the three. Now, it doesn't mean you can't not have a website. You have to have a website. You have to have one to solve for all the times, all the situations when you can't be there uh, to present the work, to get a sale over the line, to talk to somebody directly. But you want to go in order, in, in, in hierarchical order. First way to sell art, if you can, in, in person, face to face. Next way to sell art, uh, uh, leveraging live video, okay? Like what we're doing now. Third way, on your website. If you have all three of those in place, and you are working on your marketing, the attention piece, then we get to the top block of the pyramid, and then, and then I'll quickly wrap this up and we'll get on to questions. And the top block of the pyramid is everything else. You have a gallery that's in your town that's selling your work, fantastic. It's gotta be in addition to these other two things. You're doing the show and theater circuit, fantastic, amazing. It's gotta be in addition to having the two first blocks of the pyramid. Um, you, have, you have an art agent that's selling things for you or whatever else you have, a co-op, you're in an online gallery, an Etsy or, or a Fine Art America or any of the rest of it, it's all gotta be in addition at the very top of the pyramid. So the biggest problem you have is attention. You need to learn how to market. You have to sell art in the three ways and get the business model right and then everything else. You stack an art business like that, uh, you stand a fantastic uh, chance of succeeding. Now, what I'm gonna do now is open it up to questions. A um, whole bunch of different ways that we can do that. One, if your camera's on, I'll see you, and you can do, you know, you can do the old school, you know, raise your hand and I'll see it. Uh, myself and my team will see it. Uh, if your camera is not on and you click the participants bar down at the bottom, there's a way that you can digitally raise your hand and I'll see it. Um, so you just click participants down on the bottom. Um, 
I've got the chat, so you can leave a question in the chat and I can pull that into the screen. You can see people uh, leaving questions. You can see my team giving me messages in there. So I'll see the chat. Uh, if you're watching on any of the socials, Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, you can leave questions there. I'll see those. I'll be able to pull those in um, and we can talk about those. So that's sort of how we go. Uh, and we'll just go from the top and work on down. And all right, so John, John looks like you're first. You got a bunch of questions. Uh, go ahead, John. John Dubach, can I mute yourself? To unmute yourself, it's the bottom left-hand corner. Like you have to like scroll down to the bottom of the zoom bar and then hit the mute button. Are you there, John? Thanks, Patrick. Hey. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. It takes a little while sometimes. Yeah, I know you come highly recommended from uh, Mr. Laka. He's been with you guys for how many years? Yeah, a long time, five years. And you, you can only take that with a grain of salt, right? Because we're really good friends at this point, too. If he, disparag yeah, if he, if he disparaged me, that would be uh, super disconcerting. Yeah. And so, you know, my brother is very experienced mm -hmm. as a photographer. I hope to do his marketing. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to partner with you. So the question kind of is, quickly, where will ASF be in five years? Yeah, it's one a, of those long-term questions. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, there's there's a lot to unpack in that one, right? Like the the first thing to unpack is, do you think we'll be sold or acquired? And <laughs> I would say, yeah, I I would say no. I mean, I, you know, it's an impossible question to ask, right? Um, because you know, I, I'm not the founder. I don't own the company, but we are owned by a single founder. He's got a long track record business. Uh, he never wants to sell anything, so I sort of doubt. I sort of doubt that that he will sell. Um, so I think we'll be doing, all, you know, v very much similar to what we're doing now and just humming along and continuing to grow. I think, you know, this is a really weird niche, like the art and the photography niche in the sense that there's not a lot of like really, really big companies in it that are doing what we do. So we don't have a, co a lot of competition right now, which is sort of a good thing. So there's, there's, there's reasons to continue to build the business bigger and figure out more ways to, to grow it and everything else. And there's a lot of runway to it. Um, especially on the photography side, because I don't think anyone's really got like the whole route to shoot package for photographers worked out, nor portrait photographers, a lot of the service-based guys. So yeah, I think there's that. And then, you know, you were, you were asking the contract questions. Literally the only fine print thing in there that's disconcerting to an artist is our marketing education is getting better and better and better. So one of the only problems we've had recently are people trying to take the marketing education that are customers and go and sell it on their own, you know, in terms of like classes and such. So that's been the only issue we had. But other than that, with us, the artist owns everything. You know, y y we own nothing as art storefronts. You know, you own the domain name. So God forbid something did w go wrong. All you do is you flip the switch and, and you'd be somewhere else. But it's, it, yeah, I, I don't think you have anything to worry about in the, in, the, in the fine print. But does that answer the fine print question or no? Yeah, it does. Thanks. And I'll defer to the others. Thanks for answering the question, Patrick. Yeah. You, 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 honestly, you honestly have nothing to worry about. I mean, the, the, just to put a finer point on it, like one of the most important things to us is the artist has to own everything, right? And the artist and all of these other things does not ever own it all. And it's tragic, right? You have to have your own email list. You have to own your own traffic. You have to own your own domain name. When you do, you're building something that no one can take away from you, right? And you know, I use I, I use the this guy's book, and depending on depending on who you talk to, he's he's the best selling artist in the uni entire United States right now, which is Wyland, the whale guy, you know, the guy that does the whale murals, and he talks about in his book how the collector list, which is why I ranted on this earlier, the collector list is like one of the most important aspects of his business because you know they'll buy in upwards of seven pieces in art from you you know, over the course of their lifetime and you keep getting bigger and better and better and your prices go up and the collectors just go along for the ride with you, right? And when you're in a lot of these other business models where you are not capturing information on your collectors, you're in a bad way. You cannot, like, you, you can't market to these folks, right? Uh, you can't tell them about sales and things that are coming up. And if you're not in a position where you're, you can do that, it's, it's trouble, right? Um, it's, it's, it's big, big trouble. And as a final... I usually get into this, but I, I want to give it some tooth, uh, some teeth. Like you, you, you talk about Laka, for instance, right? Laka's great at building a collector list. Okay, he's got a big one, right? And I'll pull this up because I, I always have it. So he he has he, we've been doing some of these live art show sales with him, right? And I've run multiple with him, 
And I've also run one just recently with this gal named Meg, and I'm just I'm going to show her for the time being because it's this is a better view. But From in her case, okay, this was a live art show I ran with her. Like I sort of was like the executive producer on it last week, last week or two weeks ago, and there were 82 pieces in the sale. And what she did before she even had the sale was she's emailed her collector list and she's like, hey, collectors. Um, look, I'm having this sale, you know, I love you guys, you guys support me, you've bought great art, so you don't have to buy anything or feel compelled, but if you want any of these pieces, you get first shot. And before the sale even took place, okay, before the camera even got turned on, she sold 37 pieces out of the 82. Just done, sold, right out of the gates, boom. And, you know, it was the same, it was the same case in, in, in Locus. In, in Locus too, like, you know, I, I helped him do this, we had this like whole playbook worked out, but, you know, you, you email the collectors and you're like, hey, collectors, here's the show. You can see it before anyone else. Uh, if you'd like anything, just let me know. And it's like, if you are an artist or a photographer that's not building that list, you are in deep trouble in terms of, in, in terms of trying to make it long term. Like it is so fundamentally important. So I don't know why I got ranting on that. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, we'd, we'd love to talk to you, John. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And oh, right, hold on. I unmuted, I muted you. Unmuted you. I got trigger happy. Hold on, I'll finish you up. No, don't worry. Go ahead, try to unmute again, John. And the CRM within the ASF program, is it uh, pretty basic? I mean, I'm a CRM specialist, that's why I asked. Yeah, I mean, it's not full-blown Salesforce, right? But we have we have programmed some custom stuff into it that's kind of interesting. Um, and it does automatically integrate with MailChimp because that's what we recommend most everybody use. And it does, it, 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 it's certainly better than just like a, a blah, blah, like CRM that you get with, you know. Um, better than Excel then. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. all right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great, I'll move on, thank you. Yep, okay, so next up it's gonna go Brian, then it'll be John, then Brian, then David, and I see the questions in the chat. Joan, I see yours, I get that, I get that one a lot. That's a super interesting one, I'll talk to you about that. So next up's Brian Peasnell. So, You'll have to unmute, Brian, and I'll let you know when you get it. There we go. Gotcha. Yeah, I actually, I have three three questions. Okay. Um, the first one, I understand that really at the center of this and at the center of success is marketing. Yes. And um, my question is, is I, I'm still employed full time. Yes. And as I get older, I'm looking for something else to maybe a, a side gig. Yeah. And yeah, you know, photography is a passion of mine. Okay. My question is, because I want to do this right, if I'm going to do it, how much time is actually required for the marketing, you know, to, to, to be successful? Yes. Um, you, you're, you're asking the crystal ball question. And sadly, there's, there's no answer to the crystal ball question. You know, I get this question a lot and it's, it, it's a hundred percent different. Like if I went and tried to grab all the customers and say, okay, we're going to, we're going to track their level of success and divide it by the hours that they're working on their marketing. It, the results would be so disparate and spread out and crazy. You can't be, compare your beginning to someone else's middle, to someone else's end, to someone else's, yeah. you know, it just, it just doesn't work. So it, one, that's fact, that's truth. You got to know that because everyone's niche is different. Everyone's everything's different. The good news though, is that where everyone goes wrong is not in the hours a week that they can give, but in doing so consistently 52 weeks a year. You can't do that, you're not in the game. So consistency is 100% it's a consistency thing. That's straight up and moves mountains. And you know, 80% right. of our customers are you. Full-time jobs. They want to be full-time artists. They want to sure. be full-time photographers, <laughs> but they're not there yet, right? And so, you know, they they throw at it the hours that they can throw at it. I think what you'll find is you'll you'll end up devoting Here's how it'll start. You'll end up devoting the number of hours that you have to give that you're comfortable giving. Um, the minute that you start quitting, we will scream and yell at you so loud that instantaneously you won't quit. I'm not kidding, it's important. It's like really important, the screaming, the yelling, the needling. Then what's gonna happen is you're gonna get some early wins. Once you get the early wins, it's gonna totally fill up your gas tank of motivation and that'll keep you going. Does the first year suck? Yes, it does. Let me tell you, it sucks, okay? Getting started, learning all the digital marketing, like starting to exercise these muscles, how to send an email, what language to use, how do I post on the socials, what about Facebook and Instagram ads? I have to do a live art show. Like the first year, you have to learn this stuff, right? It's like, you you know, you've never cooked anything before and I have to teach you sauces and I have to teach you how to use the knife and I have to teach you, you know, how to use the grill, right? But once you start doing that, you start cooking a couple of decent meals, you're like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. But for most people, it's a new skill set to learn, right? And it, and, it, and, it, and it takes some time. So you kind of have to, 
you have to be prepared for that and be ready to ready to you know devote that time. Yeah. So the other question I had, mm -hmm. and I've had a chance to sort of play around with a couple of other sites that uh, basically give you the option to sell, mm -hmm. and I also have some friends who sell, and I notice a lot of sites when you, the basic thing is is you upload the highest quality image that you have. Right. Then once you've done that, you lose control over the cropping of the image. Uh, I have some uh, some images that are creatively vignetted in a certain way, and yep. they only work with a certain aspect yep. or certain ratio. And it, you know, if you upload that and, and they try to impose some other type of ratio on it, it it's embarrassing and it's like something you don't want to claim. Yes. Um, how much control do we have? Hundred percent. You will not have that problem with us in all in the slightest. Excellent. Because yeah. that for me, that that's a big thing. Yeah. I mean, if you sometimes it'll it'll get a little wonky in terms of in terms of the merch, because the merch mm -hmm. is like not some standard sizes, but uh, otherwise with the print, you have you have, you know, granular granular control on it. So you won't have any problems there at all. Excellent. And then the last question just mm -hmm. very simple. Um, the the demo. Yeah. Is that different from the 10 minute call? Yes. Yes. It okay. Is. So the, there are so many bells and whistles and features and ins and outs of the whole thing. It takes an hour on a Zoom call. So the last thing that they want to do is they don't they don't want to just re, I mean, first of all they would die if they had to run one after another after another. And so you get the call out of the way. Are you sure you're a good fit? Are you sure you like us? You know, is your work been selling? All you know, what are the prices like? Da, da, da. Does everything feel right as we all go? Yes. Okay, then you go. Then you go and schedule the thing. So that's that's why we do that process. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's it. That, uh, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. So it's going to go John, Brian, David, and then yes, Pamela, I'll get you. It'll, it'll be 20 minutes or less. You should be fine. Okay. John Coleman, you're up next. Hey, thank you uh, for answering my questions. Can yeah, you hear no, me? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Got you, John. Go ahead. So uh, currently I have a website okay. uh, right now. I use uh, Wix. Okay. Um, I'm a digital artist. Okay. Uh, I do paint other like oil paintings and things, but mostly mm -hmm. digital presence. But okay. if I was to transfer with you all, would, would it, I need to change my website as well? Or would you all just be more of a marketer for me or to help me kind of hone yeah. in on my skills? Yeah. So I, we get this question a lot and it, you know, especially like, you know, building a website, it's like moving. Right. And it's like, after you've moved once and you get all that done, someone's like, you know, I need you to move again. And you're like, what? Are you kidding me? I don't, I don't ever want to move again. That was the most stressful thing I've ever done in my life, right? Um, we get we get people that that want to come on and just do just do the marketing. And 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 while you certainly could, um, there's a lot of like marketing heft that's built into the software, right? Like the one example I use all the time is we have, you know, it, it, it's a cookie, right? Which is like a it, it's just JavaScript tracking. Uh, but we wrote it ourselves, and the way that I, you know, analogize it is like your store, John, is the Apple Store, right? And the cookie we call it Art Buyer AI is the little video camera in the upper hand corner. And I walk into John's store, which is actually the Apple Store, and I pick up the iPhone and I look at the iPhone, put it down. I pick up the iPad, I look at the iPad, I put that down. I pick up a MacBook Pro, I look at the MacBook Pro, I put that down. I buy the iPhone and I leave. The software will instantaneously alert you and say, hey, John, Patrick just came into your store. He bought the iPhone. He looked at the iPad, and he looked at the iPad Pro, or the, the MacBook Pro. Here's the email text we think you should send. And boom, toss up a little box with the email text all in there. And you can change it, or you can go with what we said. And the text will say something along the lines of, hey, Patrick, thank you so much for coming into my store. I can't wait to ship you the iPhone. Uh, I couldn't help but notice that you were also looking at the iPad and the MacBook Pro. And I just want to let you know that for first-time customers, we have this special first-time discount in which you can bundle items. So if that's something you're interested in talking about, love to talk to you. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and ship the iPhone out right away and let me know what you think. And you can click send or you can edit it, right? And so that's one feature of a whole bunch that you would be missing if you weren't on the web software. And you know, while you would get a huge bump out of the educational material and the marketing and the meetings and everything else, you, 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 you wouldn't be getting the full pop, right? You wouldn't be getting the full pop of your investment is what I would say. But yes, you could. Uh-oh, John, I think you muted yourself. I'm going to unmute you again. 
It's gonna be yeah, annoying. thanks. I'm at work. I'm yeah, at no, work watching for sure. meetings. So. For, for sure, for sure. I got you. I but got no, you. yeah, that, that pretty much answered my question. I appreciate it. I, I'm also kind of like Brian, probably some others full time work and yeah. Uh, just I've done everything as far as the online presence, but as you mentioned, that consistency, I think that's one thing I've been oh, it's so important. on a little bit. Oh, it's so important. And literally, like that, you know, that's what I was saying to Brian too. Like, you only have two hours a week to give me. Okay, fine. Book off two hours a week for fifty-two weeks, and then we'll reevaluate and see where you're at. Right? Like, move mountains, man. It's 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 tortoise and hare situation, right? Like everyone does the hare and they run, they run, they run for like a mile or two and then they quit, right? Tortoise is just mm-hmm. cruising along, cruising along. He ends up winning the race, right? That's how it goes. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Very thanks. much. Thanks, John. Okay, next is going to be uh, Brian Roberts. Go ahead, Brian. You'll have to unmute Brian. I'll let you know. Yep, Here gotcha. Go. Gotcha, gotcha. A um, couple of questions. Yep. Currently, I have my stuff on Etsy. Okay. For three months and no sales. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm looking for something where where I can get some sales and marketing help. Mm -hmm. So my, my first question is what are the costs to me for your services? Yeah. So the way that we do it is that we're, we're like any other website company out there and that we charge a monthly fee. We're unlike any other website company out there and that we teach you how to sell art and photography all year long from the minute that you join. So we charge a monthly fee for the website software, and then we charge a one-time fee that gets you the marketing education for life. It's essentially, it enrolls you in college that there's never any graduates. So that's the two sides of the equation, and I can, I can get into what I know about pricing on those. But the larger part is, you know, you uploaded your stuff to Etsy, you're not getting any sales because that's not how Etsy works. With us, you know, you're going to create your own website and then you are going to have to get in and start working on the marketing, right? And it's going to take you, it's going to take you a good six months, nine months, a year of consistent marketing until you probably really start getting rolling, right? Now, some results happen much quicker than that. Um, some people hit home runs right out of the gates, but I like setting the expectations of saying like, you know, with Etsy, you uploaded it all. You're like, okay, that was kind of a pain in the butt, but that wasn't that bad. And then nothing happened because no marketing was done, Right. Like Etsy's not going to just sell things for you automatically. Like it takes even to grow like a decent Etsy store takes like a long time, right? Like you, you have to do some marketing on that thing too. So, you know, if, if, assuming you're willing to do all that, I think you need to get that in, in your mind. The the entry level plan is a thousand dollars down one time fee or nine hundred ninety nine, I think, to get into the marketing university. Once you pay that, you got it for life. Nothing ever changes. And then the website software, I believe, is forty nine dollars a month for that one. Okay. Um, yeah, do you guys build a website or do I build a website? So our websites are highly templatized, very, very basic. All you have to do is upload your images, put in your about me, put a logo up and that's it. There's no custom design work. There's no changing a bunch of fonts and colors or, or, you know, rearranging things or trying to do any crazy programming. Our sites are basic for a reason. They're meant to, to mimic an art gallery. That being said, if you don't want to build it, we have a service where they'll build it for you and you don't have to touch anything. So we have we have sort of all, all, all of the above available, I guess is what I would say. Okay. Okay, I think that's my questions for now. Okay, thanks, Brian. Yeah, wouldn't it be so much cooler if there was a gallery where you could just upload things and it just worked? Okay, Pamelia, I'm, I'm hearing you have to go, so I will unmute you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've oh, got to, totally I just jumped on this. I just, totally you've been it. in my email box forever and I've just noticed you for the first time. So I'm really excited about this. Awesome. First um, question mm-hmm. is like about the quality of the Giclée prints. You have zero to worry about there in the slightest, not even an okay. issue. Okay, yeah. can I get a test of that? Oh, like course. a yeah. test print or yeah, a strip? Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. We use, um, we use Bay Photo on, the, on, on one coast, we use graphic dimensions on the other coast. They're all using the same paper, the same printers, the same inks, and it's all top quality. You, any media type you want, essentially, right? Like, but yes, you, okay. you can get you can so get. So you're offering, I know you're offering merch, but you're also offering the highest level of printing available for fine art, right? Correct. Cool. Correct. Um, do you have anything just like I'm new at this? I have, you know, a lot of work mm-hmm. done, 
and I've built my website over months and months. Yeah. But now I, but I've not sold anything yet. Mm -hmm. So most of what I do is nude nudes. Mm -hmm. And my question is, as far as marketing on social media, what are my options there? Yeah, Do they allow that? It's a sticky situation. It depends. It, it sort of depends. Some slide through and some some can be a little, mm -hmm. you know, you, you could get in trouble, right? Like, you know, with, yeah. with, with any niche, you're always going to have your ups and downs. And, and, and one of the ups and downs of this one is you can you can get into trouble with the social media gods. But you can get into the trouble just about anything with the social media gods, to be honest with you. The bigger yeah. issue is, have you have you attempted to sell it anywhere before or you just haven't sold it online? No, not at all. Not at all. Yes. Um, okay. So I think step one is always like, what is the quickest way that I can get my art in front of people's eyeballs and see whether or not it'll sell, right? Before you can put it up on a website, before you can worry about that. In a pre-pandemic world, I would have said, uh, Pamelia, just go and get an art fair or show or a booth anywhere your local farmer's market, throw the stuff in there and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So that, that brings up the next interesting question. So let's say wherever your town is, wherever you live, there's a local farmer's market or whatever, and you can get a booth for the day. If you had all your art in that booth, would parents be yelling at you or would they just say like, ooh, it's fine art? You know, Baby. well, this this gives you an idea of what what I what my art is. Yeah. So it's pretty nude. Wait, I can't get it. There we go. <laughs> I think you saw it enough. Yeah. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. There's so, a delay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it it, it if a hundred percent of it is, and a hundred percent of it is like you know, um, male and female genitalia, you 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 might run into some issues for sure. It 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 brings. Well, there's not genitalia, but everything else like. Yeah, it, it, it brings in a certain set of circumstances when it comes to digital marketing because no one wants to let you show it, right? Um, so it, it, it definitely does bring up some difficulties. Uh, I mean, I, I, w I wonder what they even do. Like, what do they do at like an art and show in their circuit, right? Like, did they make you just put curtains on the booth or? Yeah, what? like I couldn't do this on a fair, you know, like where the kids are walking by probably. Yeah, you would have, um, you'd have to have something like a little bit more, you know, tasteful on the outside and then like curtains on the inside but you know there's 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 a lot of photographers that do this too right like with like actual nudes with like you know somewhat questionable looks right um and you know the reality is is that despite the difficulty in marketing and getting the word out you just have to learn how to be creative about doing it because there's a diehard audience that just loves this stuff and wants to collect it right so there's exactly. yeah there's there's the upside and the downside to it um it's a good question though i'm trying to think who, who how do you tell your artist to market then? If, if not social, are there other ways? If not, you said no SEO. Um. Yeah, SEO, total waste of time. Um, right. You know, so, okay, this is, what, this is interesting what Sharon said. You can call, you can call and ask the high-end art festivals what they can do uh, with them. Many of them have experience with this question. Yeah, my, you know, it, 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 it's, it's so interesting, right? Because can you advertise it? Oh, you absolutely can advertise it. The websites that you advertise it on, a little bit questionable, but that's where everyone goes that, you know, <laughs> has a product that's even slightly questionable. And, you know, I would, I would, I would say, I would probably not want to give the advice on Facebook personally, but there are definitely some things that I could advise you, right? Um, okay. And John, this is interesting, that's why I love the wisdom of crowd. So John's saying, you know, Instagram will allow some of the chest, but private's not so much, yeah. Like that's, that's, that's pretty much my experience too, right? Like the minute, the minute, and, and, and then not only that, like no one wants to be living their life constantly skating on thin ice, right? Like just, just yeah. worried the whole time. Like that's just no way to live. Um, but yeah, I, we could, we, we could talk offline because I don't even want to give you the advice publicly. It's just, I'm streaming on Facebook right now and you know, you gotta, you gotta walk on eggshells. Oh something. yeah. But there, so don't say the N word. <laughs> yeah, there are there are some websites that you could advertise on um, that you can get some eyeballs for. What I would probably do, um, what I could tell you high level is that, you know, hide hide the stuff a little bit deeper in the in the website and then have some creative hooks, you know, saying yeah. it without saying it to, to get some people in. Um, you know, we do have I gotta ask this guy, we have this this photographer, um, and you know, he's a gay guy and shoots some like pretty risque gay stuff. And mm -hmm. he does extremely well. And, you know, I know I know he's got some ways of, of being creative about it, but yeah. Okay, so you would have the ability, like if I were to join, you'd have the ability to advise me on how to sell my work. Uh, yes, yes, you would. Okay. But you're, def so, you're, you're, okay. De you're definitely gonna have to get creative for sure, right? Like, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it's no different, it's no different than, I've got a buddy that has a supplement company, right? And, you know, whether a supplement is questionable or not, 
really, really hard for this guy to sell because he can't go on Facebook. He can't advertise on Facebook, can't advertise on Instagram because you know they, they won't be seen advocating that. It's the same for people that sell gun stuff. Socials won't touch any of the gun stuff, like holsters, okay. firearms, firearm, you know, none of it at all, right? So okay. it speaks it speaks to how someone has too much power in this world, right? Because they own they own like a huge swath of the digital ecosystem. Okay. And it's, yeah, it, it, it's it, it, it's frustrating, right? Um, yeah. So, like, my next step would be to to schedule the one hour demo. Is that something that you could that you do? Do you do that? Or do I, I definitely don't do that. No, um, there's not enough hours okay. in the day. But a member of the team would, and then yeah, I I would I would I can tell you about the websites that I know of, which uh, you know I, I've heard of <laughs> that that you can advertise some of this stuff on, which because it's an important it's an important way to contemplate it. But still, yeah, I mean, it's it's super interesting problem to solve for, right? Um, I do right. I do like John's idea here in the chat too, which is, you know, I would probably get a list. I would go onto Instagram and I would I would use the hashtag nudes and I would get the artists that have the biggest following and be like, hey, I'm trying to break into this industry. How like how do you get around this situation of showing this digitally? Like, what's the easy way to do it and see see sort of what they have to say in that capacity? Um, okay. Yeah, because I, I I think that's I think that's an interesting way to go about it. But yeah. And I just have one other quick question. Please. Um, do you have any advice on um, making limited editions versus open editions? It's kind of along the lines of pricing. Yes. Yeah, we got a ton of advice on that. Um, step one is just doing it right um, because there's no hard and fast rule book that says like you have to do this or you have to have this many numbers or you price here you price there. The the, mm -hmm. the key about the limited originals limited and then and then open editions is that you know you want to have in your store price points covered meaning like you know you could start prints out at like 50 to 75 dollars and then you know your your uh, uh, li limited editions can go you know from like a thousand to like two thousand you know the originals five thousand and then maybe commissions are 2500 the point is that you have a nice little range between all of the products right which is and how do you between... separate and, and make the value uh, for the limited editions? versus the open editions, like if I bought a limited edition, but then there's also an open edition, is that based on size then? Like you? No, no, not always. I mean, if you're gonna make a, like a limited edition print, I'm saying usually would not do an open edition print to that. Sometimes okay. you do, sometimes okay. you don't. But okay. then, so, you know what some people do? They sign the limited editions and they put in like a special certificate with authenticity and then they still right, offer right. prints, right? So it, it, it sort of varies or you do it on a different media type. It, it, it doesn't mean there's a hard and fast rule to use every single solitary time. You have a ton of options, but yes, I absolutely recommend doing them. Cool. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, next up, David. Go ahead, David. David Chettle. And you'll have That's to- me. Yeah, gotcha. You, yeah, gotcha. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, a um, couple of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, do you take a commission on each piece I sell, or how does that work? We have, God, what do we? We don't take a commission. I think we call it a transaction fee, and it varies on the various different plans. Um, but we do have one. I think it's as low as like one percent, or maybe it goes up to five percent. Um, you'd, you'd have to ask the guys in the demo because I don't know what the exact numbers are, but yes. Okay, so I understand. I've heard different things, $1,000 to join. What mm -hmm. does that give me for the $1,000? Yeah, again, so the way the way I explained it earlier is like, we're like every other website company out there and that we have a monthly fee, right? The small monthly fee. We're unlike every website company in that we teach you to market all year long, right? It's like you're in college. And so the $1,000 pays to get into the college. You pay it once, you don't ever have to pay it again. The monthly fee covers the website. Okay, so that's just an initiation fee of a thousand bucks to yeah. get in on this. And yeah. then, uh, then every time if I use somebody to help me with my marketing, do I, I pay for that too? Well, no. So we teach you how to market all year long. And there's like three or four different pieces of that, right? Like one piece, there's, hey, here's the do-it-yourself digital education that teaches you how to do all the thing, right? Here's the okay. Facebook group where you can interact with people. We hold class on a weekly basis where we tell you what to do. And we do Q&A, just like we're doing right here, right? There's one of these okay. sessions or two of these sessions a week um, that, that you can pop into, ask any questions. And then we have the calendar that teaches teaches you what to do all year long, right? Like. You know, a couple of weeks ago, it would have said, David, Mother's Day is coming up. Here's the sale that we want you to run. Here's the playbook, you know, for the education to, to, to how you run a sale. And then on Tuesday, we're teaching how to run the Mother's Day sale. Come with your questions, right? And it's like that gotcha. all year long. So, yeah. you know, yeah. and then if it's in between class hours, then 
all of our customers are in a Facebook group, and a lot of times people will bounce things off. Like, what do you think of this email copy? Should I lead with this image? Uh, how are you doing this, right? So, you know, it's, it, we believe that that teaching is really the secret sauce of the whole thing because we're teaching you how to sell art and photography all year long. It's a big deal, right? Um, so right, that, that's what right, that $1,000 okay. pays for is all the teachers and the staff and the technology and everything else to do that. Okay, my next question is on blockchain. Yeah. Do you, do you teach that or do you help you set your art up on the blockchain? We're, we're following it very closely. Um, both the C CEO and I are longtime crypto guys, um, bought, sold, holding, um, trading all the time. So we have that side sort of baked into us. Um, I believe right now, at least early on, there's a, you know, it's, it's sort of like the gold rush type of a hype. And so everyone's like rushing over there. It, if you're having, if you can't nail down selling your art and your photography in the traditional ways, and you think you're going to jump to the blockchain and that's all of a sudden going to change the game, um, that's the difficulty. It's not the way that it works. All the people that are successful that are selling NFTs for the most part on the blockchain are people that have been really plugged into the crypto community or have been marketing their art for a long, 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 long time and would have sold anyway. So mm -hmm. while it's exciting, while it is an expansion, uh, we believe in many cases of, of, of the art market, meaning, uh, you know, sales are going down in, in, in NFTs uh, and on the various different marketplaces that would not have been going down uh, in the normal in the normal art sales. So I believe it's an expansion. That being said, it's a shiny object right now. There is a ton of friction that it introduces uh, to, to, you know, you have to. You have to go and buy Ethereum. You have to get the wallets all figured out. You have to go ahead and upload it. You got to pay for the guests. There's like, uh, there's just, there's like 55 different steps that it introduces into the whole process. And you know, it, it really is properly suited for digital artwork and not any other. And even with digital artwork, you don't deliver the asset when something sells on the blockchain. All you're doing is delivering a token that says Patrick owns David Chettle's latest work, right? But you could have said right. you could have sent that thing to fifty. You could have sent the file to fifty five other people, and I wouldn't have known, right? So, mm. while I while I'm very optimistic about it, I think it's absolutely full of promise. It is not going to provide the ROI for the vast majority of people trying to sell art and that are rushing onto it. Uh, it's just another marketplace. Everyone's thinking gold rush, gold rush, gold rush, and the ones that do figure out how to upload their art, most of them are not selling a damn thing because they weren't selling anything anywhere else either. So that's yeah, what I'd say. the thing I like about the idea is that. You're you're always in on a piece of the sale if you're if you get famous and your art keeps selling and oh like amazing it it's, a, thousand, yeah, it's amazing it, it's know? amazing what it portends I mean I think a complete game changer but I also think it's going to take you know a long long time for that 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 tr that true perspective to be realized like right now right. right now like I am a huge technology nerd okay and I struggle with buying and selling and moving crypto around. Like it's hard. It's like really, really hard, right? You have to like download so many things. The point is, is that they have nowhere near made this uh, uh, even close to something where a normal consumer can even understand it. And so these sales that you hear about are going on in there are really just the people that have made a bunch of money on crypto and they don't know what to do with it and they're supporting the movement themselves, right? So mm -hmm. I, I love what it portends. I think it will eventually be the future, but I think we're a great many years away from that. Okay. So yeah. we're... If you got in now, you're in on the ground floor and you'll learn. But anyway, exactly. there's lots of other things to learn. Exactly. Okay. So when I when I call in for assistance, uh, do I get the same person? Is there like a coach or do I get to talk to different people? Oh, yeah. There's, there, explain there, there, my own situation over and over? Or? Yeah. I mean, well, you're you're kind of conflating a couple of different things. Like, you know, oftentimes if, you, if you're having a support-related issue, you know, issues with the technology, then you will be assigned the same agent. And, and they'll help you, right? Um, but mm -hmm. we have so many different ways to get support, right? Like, you know, there's the simple chat, there's the normal ticket process. Excuse me. We have support sessions that are on Zoom, just like this, that you can pop into and ask questions on, and they can take over control of your screen and everything else. So we have it in so many different venues, it would be impossible to use the same agent every single solitary time. But I think, you know, you, you'll find if you look, okay. uh, look around at our support anywhere, it's, it's what people love just about more than anything. I mean, it's, it, it really is a solid product. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm on with uh, GoDaddy right now and they're very good. They get on there and help you. So yeah, I imagine you're the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So it starts out at a thousand bucks and then it's like 45 bucks a month or something to keep going on this thing. So it depends on 
how much I use it, how much I'm going to spend. Yeah. 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 Okay. That was, I, I've gathered that from your other conversations. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, it, ultimately like, you know, the, 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 the structure that we have set up, um, you know, some people beat us up for, Oh, it sounds so expensive. Like I can go, I can go to your competitor for $39, $29 a month or like 11 99 a month, whatever it is. It's like, yeah. Okay. But what you don't realize is that no one has a website problem. Artists and photographers do not have a website problem. If they did, there would be all these websites you could move to where you actually might see some success in your business, but there aren't, are there? Everyone moves from one website to another, thinking that that's the problem, chasing the shiny object, and then they have no sales at all of them. That's a problem, right? So mm -hmm. we realized that the only way that we could fix the no sales problem is if we taught art artists and photographers to market. In order to do that, you have to start and then never stop. It has to be regular and consistent and week in and week out. It's like if we, if we do that and we're capable of achieving that, then our customers are going to be successful. And with successful customers, it turns out that takes care of everything. Then they start telling their friends. And then, you know, everyone starts joining the business. So it's, it's literally the only thing that matters. And it's what we're after more than anything else is just creating those successful customers. Okay. So you're going to help me get on all the social medias, all the places. Oh, so all day. All day. All long. of it. Okay. All, good. all year long, too. Right. Like it, it, <laughs> all right. It, it, uh, it never ends. It never ends. Now, this is to me sounds like such a great marketing tool. Your whole concept here. Mm -hmm. Do you only market art? Well, I mean, it, there's, 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 two, there's two por portions to that, right? Like, fundamentally, marketing is just about getting attention, right? And so, yeah. once you learn how to get attention, you can effectively leverage it in a bunch of different ways. That's number one. Number two, you know. Everyone runs around out there thinking that art sells and photography sells in a certain way, i.e. I put a post on that says, David Chettle's latest piece, buy my art, 40% off, sale ends Sunday, right? That's not how mm -hmm. art is sold. It's not an impulse purchase. You need to get my attention and then get my email and then email me regularly. And then, oh, look, you're having a sale for Mother's Day, but I don't really want anything right now. And then quarter four comes along. I just moved out of my job in the city because of COVID. I moved out to the suburbs. I have white wall space. Where am I going to go to get art? Oh, that's right. I like David's work. He's been emailing me. That's how it sells. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all how, okay. how it sells. So to go back to your question, we'll teach you email marketing. We'll teach you how to market on the socials. We'll teach you how to leverage live video to sell art and photography. And you can move a lot of that skill set into getting attention for your various other different items. So that's part of it. But also how art and photography actually sells, big part of it. And we teach you that too. So it's, uh -huh. it, 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 it's, it's both sides of the coin. But yes, you, you, you will come in uh, uh, with limited marketing acumen and you will leave if you ever do leave uh, being being pretty effective at it. That's for certain. So you can leverage it in all sorts of things. And we do our customers do uh, they leverage it for, you know, their personal businesses and as they have service businesses, um, you know, and, and, and along the lines that way. Okay, well, thank you very much for chatting with me. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to go ahead with it. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think you'll like it. And, and, and you know, as good as it is good as it sounds, David, I don't want you, you know, thinking like, Oh, my gosh, this sounded so great. It is great. I believe in our product immensely. It's amazing, but I do not sugarcoat the fact that the first year is a pain in the butt, because you have a oh, yeah. you have a lot to learn, right? You need you, you, yeah. there's no shortcut to learning it. Some of it you're going to yeah. be pulling your hair out of your head because you're like this does not make sense, and you're going to get frustrated. But if you crash through those quitting points where everyone else always quits, you get out on the other side and you're like, oh my gosh, I know how to run a sale from top to bottom, like a really, really good one. And what no one understands in the art business is like, it's just a retail business at the end of the day. Yeah, fine, it's online and we teach you all these various different ways to do it, but it's like, you have your normal marketing and then you have a sale. And then you have your normal marketing and you have a sale. And then you have your normal marketing and it's Q4, those are the biggest sell sales of the year. Guess what? You, you, you have to learn the normal marketing piece and then you have to learn how to handle the sales piece. And each sale builds on the next one, you get better and better and better. And it's like, the one thing I know about Q4, one comes around every year, right? You know, the one mm -hmm. thing I know about a Valentine's Day sale, Valentine's Day comes along once a year. So it's like once you once you learn and get effective at this stuff, every year just starts building and building and building and building and building. And then year five, year six, year seven, year eight, you actually have a real business on your hand that no one can take away, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which which is which is the most important aspect of it for me. So. 
yeah, it's it, it, that, and you won't waste your time because we tell you what works. So those are the two things you, I'm most proud of. You got to be persistent. In life yes. Or you'll get nowhere. Exactly. Exactly. And it's all a learning curve. Every day, you, it's a, you got to learn something new. So that's right. Whether you can stick with it, but I'm sure I will. I've done it a lot in the past, and it's not like just with my art. Even when you're creating a piece of work, I always look for when I get to the point and I think, why did I take this on? Why will I? And then I push on through, whether it's painting or sculpting. Uh, you get past that and then it all comes together. So that's right. Yep. OK, well, once again, thank you very much. And uh, we'll get on here again. Well, one quick question. Yep. <laughs> this might be uh, ridiculous, but I've, I've seen your uh, pre-log uh, movie or video a couple of times now and it's kind of boring sitting there after you've seen it a couple of times is there some way you can get into this without having to watch that yeah just um join put the thing on mute wait 20 minutes and then pop on <laughs> oh i have to wait for 20 minutes yeah, yeah. yeah or, okay. or or just join 20 minutes late you know what i mean yeah that makes sense okay too simple yeah. all right <laughs> all right thank thanks you. david i appreciate it it's boring, it's boring for me too. Trust me, I sit there and fiddle with my phone. I got to I got to redo it, another version of it anyway. Um, Joan, okay, Joan's got a great question. Joan, so I'm gonna unmute you. You you can unmute if you like, um, and and ask me the question. So Joan says, and I'll pull this in so we can all read it. I'm trying to sell my late husband's art. It's good but weird. Unlike other more typical work, how do I connect with collectors of this unusual art? You know the 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 problem I have with your scenario, Joan, is that. The, the hardest part of this business is building up the attention and building up the eyeballs and having enough of it to, such that the work will start selling. And so in your situation, let's say you did sign up and you're learning all of those things and then you're, you're gonna go out and sell all of this stuff, right? Then you don't have any new, you, no, no new works coming into the, down the pike at all, right? Like you've got nothing new coming nor any chance of it coming because your husband's late. And so what are you gonna do with the business at that point? So that would be my, my fear in all of that. Um, I would I would probably sooner not waste a minute um, with with the shows and fairs and everything else and or, or the, the the building an online business and try to do the shows and fairs or one of those local things. Um, but how, how how did your husband sell it when he was alive? Well, he didn't sell it. Uh, he mm -hmm. was you know he he said I paint it. Someone else can sell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and and he has sold uh, mm -hmm. you know to people who sort of discover him mm -hmm. uh, you know anywhere from. Three thousand to fifteen thousand, I think, was his highest. Uh, was the highest offer okay. uh, for a large piece. Um, but his work is is uh, it's it's attention grabbing. It's very arresting, mm -hmm. and um, and I just have a feeling that if I can, uh, you know, get some of these pieces in front of a viewing public, um, that that people will recognize what his uh, what his skill was. He was a cousin to Johnny Cash, by the way. So. Uh, you know, there's that name to draw on, although it doesn't mean a lot. But um, but anyway, and, he, and the, the collection is of 825 pieces. So oh, yeah, I'm not going to run, uh, run out uh, anytime soon. Um, but I am interested in doing the in doing prints of some of the work that lends itself to that. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, you know, I mean, so I think I think like, a, you know, if you're in a situation where you think, you know, it, it could potentially be timeless, the work, right? And it could sell for years to come. And you think it's got a shot of doing that. And then, you know, because at that point with a collection that size, you could say, well, I'm going to start working on this business. I'm going to build this business up. Um, I'm going to sell off some of the originals, onesie, twosie here or there. But I'm mostly going to try to push the prints uh, in some limited editions here or there. And then, you know, continue to grow the collection in terms of value. So it's, it, it's possible to do all that. But you got to just know that it's going to take a couple years of work, right, to get that thing really firing and going. And then, you know, what would you want to do with it if you did get it there, right? Would would someone take over the business? Do you have someone in mind that would take it over um, after yeah. you're done with it? Like, you know, those are those are all the questions you got to think. It's 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 sort of like, you know, think of it as like building a house, right? Building a house mm -hmm. like you know somewhere out of town, right? It, where you're not going to be you're not going to be going to it all the time, like. You wouldn't want to go through the work of buying the land and cutting the trees down and pouring the foundation and wiring and plumbing and da 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 da, if you're just going to go live in it for a short period of time, right? You're only going to do right. that if you're if you're going to own it in perpetuity and, and and ideally pass it on to family or you know have some other people use it. Um, so that's that's sort of the way to think about it. 
okay well that gives me something to think about yeah but and, i do oh, one, i do one love that i do love the name recognition and you, and you bet you bet your bottom dollar i would exploit the crap out of it oh yeah okay. oh, oh yeah absolutely <laughs> um, absolutely let me ask you one one quick other question mm -hmm. um is there a way before i sign up is there a way for someone on your staff to take a look at some of these pieces and see if i'm you know just completely off base or uh, or if there is a possibility yeah, to uh, yeah 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 absolutely if you if you request a demo they'll look at it um, okay what I would what I, I would say two things one they'll totally look at it for you they'll totally give you your opinion and I think you should do it um, that's a that's a great way to go number two uh, the only opinion that really matters though is when the credit card comes out of the wallet and slides right you know because I understand. It, the reason the reason I and, and, and you got it but I want to punctuate it because you know everyone and their brother can be like oh my gosh this work is so profound it's incredible and you don't know if they're just blowing smoke or making you feel better or, you know if you be right. sensitive for your late husband so if you get in any of those situations where people are looking at it be like all right make me an offer then get that cash yep. out of the wallet let's see what we're dealing with here right right so ultimately that's the ultimate test but yeah okay thank you yeah thank you jen and i'm sorry for your loss thank you yeah. okay That, that, that body of work could very well be like the, like the most amazing body of work in the history of mankind. She's sitting on a gold mine. So you never know. But you do have to think through that whole building, building the business aspect of it and everything else. Um, okay. Did, we, did, did I get to all the questions? I think I did. Da, da, da. Some super interesting ones today. Yes, Brian, you can add whatever you like to the website. Yeah, I think I think I covered pretty much all of them. Yep, good. One saying I did. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much for today. Um, if you need more information, like I said, uh, there's there's going to be a request demo button. We'll send it. We'll send you after the fact. Uh, we'll send you an email too with the replay uh, uh, and you know potentially any of the any of the items or links uh, or anything that we talked about. Um, but on that note, thanks for hanging out. It's a good time. Brian, you're the last one with the camera on. I will see you later, my friend. And, uh, oh, look, there's look, there's one new message. Oh, yeah, thank you, too, Allison. Um, yeah, thanks, everybody, for the questions. It was awesome. We run these things Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so you can you can certainly come back. Um, again, I'm getting one question. I want to play with my little thing here. Let's see. So how do you address galleries that do not want to sell your work directly, do not want you to sell your work directly? Yeah, we have an, we have an article on this, Michael. Um, you're watching on Facebook, so it'd probably be a little bit harder for me to send it to you. I'm trying to think. April, will you get that article and just save the, Michael, save the, the Facebook post, and April will post um, the link to it on there. Um, you know, it's an interesting conundrum, right? Like, you know, you want to be in the gallery and you want the gallery selling well for you. And then all of a sudden they're not selling as well for you. And you're like, I'm going to sell my work direct. And they're like, no. Um, but there, there's a couple of different scenarios, Michael. And it's, you know, th at the end of the day, you know, they're your partner, right? And so you should feel like you can have a conversation with, with the, the gallery and, and iron it out. But the article we have has some sort of some step-by-step -step and some playbooks that you can run on it. Um, uh, to work it all out, right? And just to give you some of it at a high level, like if they're selling extremely well, they're selling above six figures a year, then keep the 50-50 split. Sell directly and keep the 50-50 split. Instantaneously, they'll say, okay, we'll do that. No problem. That's a great idea. And, you know, you retain the customer information in that situation, but they don't feel like they're getting smoked, right? If they're not selling a ton of your work, okay, and they're, they're good for ten or $15,000 a month, say, okay, well, here's the deal. You're bringing in ten dollars to $15,000 worth of income for me a year. I cannot survive on that. I have some things I need to do. I'm going to market my work directly and, you know, and, and anything in between. So there's some bobbing and weaving you can do along the way. Um, that's what I would say. Um, okay, April, will you also look, it looks like Michelle and Allison want that article too. We'll, we'll put it in the show notes. We'll send it to everybody. Um, so, yep, we'll, we'll make sure you guys all get it. But thanks again, everybody. Have a great rest of your week and hope to see you again soon. Bye now.